This is the fifth video in the series demonstrating how to use Fusion 360 to create a CAM post for your CNC machine. Now, in the last video, we did our simulation, so we're very comfortable with where this piece is at. We feel like uh, we didn't identify any errors, so it is ready to post and take to our CNC machine. So the first thing you're going to do is go into post process. Now, uh, that would be through the setup on the left side. I like to generally right click my mouse. You can also go up to the toolbar and select it here. You get gets you to the same place. Now notice in the beginning here that there are two tabs here. These are important. We're first going to talk about settings. Um, your machine and post. If you input your information as I demonstrated by putting your machine into your setup, this should already be filled out. If you did not, you would have to do this now. So the uh, program understands how to write code for your specific machine, but it will not write it if you if it does not have the post. You can use a generic machine, but you have to have a post for your controller for your machine. The program name also comes from the setup. So if you filled it in there, you will see it here. Um, you can do this any way you want. I end up uh, keeping the same um, file name and comment. Uh, my machine, for whatever reason, doesn't show comments easily, so I try to put my comments into my file name, my four-digit file name. The output folder is where you want the file to go. So it's going to spit out. Um, in my case, it's going to be a, a tap file or a, a just a slightly different text file, and you have to specify where you want it to go. So if you need it to go somewhere specific, um, this is where you tell it to do that. So I have a router folder for my 510 and a folder for post files. So it will drop it right in here. Um, so I recommend you keep yours somewhere where you know where it is. And like always, make sure you're organized so you're not looking for things later. And if you do an updated version, I highly recommend uh, that you label each version as you know, number one, two, or, or like Fusion does version 11 up here, because if you're like me, you will end up with a whole bunch of versions. And if you just keep saving over, you're going to lose track of which one's which. Um, you have the option to post to Fusion Team. I'm not going to be using that, but if you were working with a group of people and you wanted it there, you could do that. Uh, like I said before, for my machine, it requires tap files. So it's telling me here that's what it's going to put. I can always change out of inches, but that is personally how I work. Um, create a browser. If you look at post properties, um, if you have a tool changer or specifics to your machines, this is where you need to do it. So if I had a tool changer, I could click it here and then it's going to put in that code to do automatic tool changes, but I do not on my machine. Uh, there again, if you have fourth axes, um, one good thing can be to write machine and write tools if you have more than uh, or if yeah if you have more than one set of tools that you're using or more than one machine that could be a useful feature for you um, that is in the general options here um, also when it comes to numbering lines some people like increments of 10 uh, you may have learned if you learn to code um, manually that may be something that you're more comfortable with and like it done that way so you could do increments of 10 um, for that as well let's see built in um, here is where it relays some of the options that we've selected in our cutting um, generally i don't have to change this at all as long as i pay really close attention to all my inputs when i'm selecting tools for these operations all right let's go over to operations so it has my three operations in my setup and it shows them here as far as what the operation is how many times it's happening, what setup it's part of, um, work offsets on my uh, wood CNC. There are no work offsets, but if I was working on, you know, a Haas mill or something like that, then the work offsets would be really important. Uh, and then tools as well. So which tool that you're going to be using. Um, personally, when I am using my shark machine or any machine that does not have a tool changer, I treat every different tool change as a different op, um, program. So I will, um, to machine this, I'm going to turn off the contour because that requires a different bit. So for the first two operations, for the engrave and the trace, I'm using um, a 60 degree V bit. Uh, and for the contour operation where I'm cutting it out from the piece of plywood, I'm using a quarter inch 
uh, end mill, essentially. So knowing that I have um, to stop the program, to uh, insert the new tool, to re-zero it, I find it much easier just to run that as like a part program part A and a part B. So I would, um, in this case, if I was doing this, I'm going to post it without that third option or without that third operation, excuse me. I get the note here telling me it posted. And you can always take a look at the code by clicking this button down here at the bottom. And it's going to pull up your code here. So it's got my program name and then it dives into the code. It's going to tell me the operation here, uh, speed, spindle on, and then dive right into the code, which let's see how many lines of code we have in this operation. So we're at 5, 56, 43. So um, 5,600 lines of code in operation one and two. Quite a bit. This would take a long time to write. Okay. So it also posted this in the folder that I said to send the post to. All right, now let's go back. Let's go to post process again. And, um, oh, that's funny. So this is something I've run into in the past. So sometimes if you just click the button up here and you uh, don't click it from setup, you can sometimes lose some of that information. So and you notice here it has a lot of this information already set, whereas when I clicked it up in the toolbar, it didn't. Just something to be aware of. If you don't want to do things twice, use the setup, right click, and select post process. All right. Now, uh, so I'm going to treat the the two operations I just posted as essentially as part A of the program. And so part B, I would turn those operations off and post it with just that single uh, operation. So the contour cut. So essentially, I'm going to be I'm going to be running two separate programs even though I designed them all together, just because um, when I have to go change tools, I find that to be easier uh, to do. Another really useful thing that I do want to show you is, oh, here's another thing too. So sometimes you have to be careful. I didn't re rename it A and B, so it's asking me if I want to save over it. Uh, so when I'm talking about A and B, you have to do more than just talk. You actually have to do it. So make sure you put uh, an A in here and then a B, you can throw another comment in here as well as maybe um, which bits you want. So pay close attention to that or you might be missing part of your program. Um, what I was talking about briefly was um, this setup sheet can be a really useful thing and I wanna address that here in this video. So here again, I can access the setup sheet through the toolbar or I can go to my setup, right click it, and it is also here, setup sheet. Uh, it, it, first thing it does is ask you where you want to put this, which I wish it did that later, but that's fine. Let's just open it for now. So this is the setup sheet that we get. Uh, Fusion 360 automatically pushes this out for us. And I actually find it really useful and helpful, especially if, I, if the person that is doing all the design and CAM programming is different than the person that's going to cut it. You have to have something like this to provide all this information that is maybe up in your head and you're not uh, easily expressing. So in your in in this, it essentially shows everything. It shows uh, the piece of stock that you're working with, and here's another reason why it's really good to program your piece of stock into um, the setup. So it has your piece of stock dimensions. Um, it tells you where your work coordinate system is, uh, how many operations you have, how many tools you have, which tools, um, maximum depths. This is also really good just to double check to make sure you're not going to be killing your spoil board in the process or maybe your, uh, your bed in the worst case scenario. Uh, also tells you uh, feeds, cutting distance, estimated time. That can be very helpful. Um, and then it goes into your tools and cutters that you, that you've set, um, whether you have a, a work, uh, excuse me, a tool holder or not. Um, so this can be a really useful piece of information. Now, if all your tools are standardized, maybe that doesn't matter so much, but this is just important information to, to have when you're setting up to cut. Because even if it's just one person doing both, I've found that maybe I forgot exactly where I set zero. Am I cutting at zero? Am I cutting away from zero? How do I need to load this board into my... Uh, machine to minimize waste. Uh, some of those things can be really important, and this is a good way of tracking exactly where uh, you need to load the board, how far you're cutting from the edges, how much 
um, space do you have between the edge of the board and what you're cutting? The worst thing is to waste material, right? Nobody wants to do that because then you're wasting time then you're wasting use of your machine and your tools. So this can help solve so many of those little nagging issues that happen. So I definitely suggest you do a setup sheet um, for those reasons that I just talked about. All right. So at this point, um, you have your code in the folder that you selected. Uh, let's see if I can find mine here. See Fusion Post files. You can see I have a whole bunch of files, and the one I just created was 1050. Now, if I were actually going to cut this out, I would have taken those two extra seconds to have a 1050A and a 1050B for those two sets of operations based on, like I said, tool changes. Every time I have a tool change on a machine without an automatic tool changer, I create a different program name by having A, Bs, and Cs after the uh, four digits of the program. So I can open this up and there, there's my code. This is what the computer, the controller of your CNC machine is going to read and perform. And if you ever read code and need to fix something, you can go in here and do it. But that might be a little more advanced than some of you. All right, good luck on your projects. I hope you uh, come with some really cool stuff, minimize waste, and maximize your time. Good luck.